All right, guys, because it's getting hot, it's freaking 90 degrees right now, so we can't train in a, in a warehouse that has no AC without Timmy D dying. Uh, so I like how I'm the one that's Dude, getting in here, but done. it's because you were crying on the floor last night. No, he time, was crying. You? No, so anyways, Jacob will definitely do that in there. Um, the reason why this gym means so much to me, and it was one of my uh, bucket list things, I always wanted a home gym, is because it just represents some things. When I come in here, you see it's black and yellow. That's my colors because something about the yellow, it wakes me up. It's something that it's, it's powerful, it's, it's energetic. It gives, it's the rocky colors, you know, it's the, it's the colors that it just brings all that emotion to me. So I'm creating the atmosphere that I, I'm personally developing in, right? So I personally develop in here. And like you ever go to gyms and see, I don't know who does the decorating for the gyms, but it's gray, it's dark colors, it just, it's horrible. Like remember Tim, when we travel, we go to gyms, like this is horrible. It's the mood, you, you walk in there, the music sucks. And the, I mean, and the colors just drain you. Here, I have sunlight coming in. I love the natural sun. All this stuff is just empowering, so I love it. I just get a great workout in here, and I love it. And then I have pictures of Stallone and Drago and Arnold, and I get another Arnold one in there. So it's this, it's, it's the inspirational people that always uh, did in my life. So what I do is I make sure, I think the real good way for personal developing yourself is you, you create your environment. So I created the environment. You got the yellow, you got the black, you got the, the icons in my life that motivated me, inspired me. So even on a subconscious level, when you walk in here, it's go time. You know, you go to seminars and it's thousands of dollars and they're gonna teach you how to create a vision board and, and a PowerPoint on your vision. You put pictures there and you, isn't that what we did as kids? Like when we were kids, what did we do? We put posters of Rocky up, we put posters, you know, we put the posters of the Lamborghini up, right? We put the posters of the Lamborghini up on our walls. Girls, you put, you know, John Stamos <laughs> on your walls. Like, there's not one piece of artwork or anything hanging the wall that doesn't have a lot of meaning. We did, we did, we didn't do vision boards. We did vision rooms. So just think when you're a kid, all the things we put on our walls, they meant something. They meant something. There was something of inspiration. So when I see Rocky, I just don't see Rocky. It represents everything of me growing up as a child and watching the movies and and even watching the first movie with my dad. You know, so it's like it's so much good memories come in there. So I surround myself, my, everything around here has meaning. Everything that I hand on the walls has meaning. But you know, you gotta like, but you're taught to grow up and put, put bowls of fruit on your wall. Like what the hell is the bowl of fruit on your wall when I walk into your house? Take the bowls of fruit off your wall and put something that's meaningful. Surround it, surround your life, create your environment. Very important. Where you live, make your living environment the environment you want that conduces growth, confidence, and hero. You know, we talked about the toughest thing in life is making a decision. So when you're faced with a decision, we're always afraid of making the wrong decision, right? But the thing is, you know, you make the decision 100%. Got to go with it. Because if you waver on the decision, then that's when you get in trouble. Because then you start doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and then make a decision and go. And you can always course correct. You can course correct, but go in with 100%. Like, this is what I'm going to do. But if you waver in the middle, and maybe I'll do this, a little bit of that, and have... It's a fight, it's a fight, but I have a feeling he'll win, always. And, but I also have feelings, I, I also know the times when I talk to someone when I know they're not gonna win. And it's not because I'm judging them, I sense that they gave up, but I think he has the resilience. He's, I, could, I could feel it, he'll win when he makes the decision. There's plenty of people, I talk to them, and you can just see they're so, they're so defeated on the inside from the, from the stuff of life this is where the confidence and the pride and the ego and the hero comes in because the hero wins. He's got the hero. He's got it. You know, if I have to bench 300 pounds, I don't want to start working out that day. But, you know, my years of it, I'm ready, right? So I think that's the way personal development is. You're building the discipline, discipline muscle, all these other things. So when life does throw you a curveball, a test, you're ready. You're ready to 
whether it be a disease, whether it be starting your own business, whether it be a relationship, you're ready to tackle it and you're ready to win. Elon Musk faced bankruptcy in the face. So it's like, and I'm thinking, man, I don't want to have to go to that. But something about that, that shift happens. Like these guys went all in and it was at that last moment. They found something in themselves at that last moment. Turns around, too many stories like that. I don't want that story. So I want to learn from them. Yeah. We all do. All right, cool. Let's eat. Protein pudding. Yeah, yeah. Enemies, yeah. So, so even on a smaller scale, the congruency, it's you're you're not lying, but if you're if you're if you're behind an idea, but you and you believe in this idea, but you're not doing the idea for whatever reasons, mm -hmm. then you really can't stand behind that, yeah. right? So I have well, I have a story about congruency. So there, one day, um, there was a family that walked in. Yeah. Um, like my son is eating sugar and, and like he can't he doesn't want to stop and he, she asked the man like tell him to stop eating sugar and then the man said come back in two weeks and then they came back in two weeks and she asked why did you say to come back in two weeks and the man said I have to stop eating sugar Ooh. Dun, dun, that was dun. good <laughs> And, and you know, and you know who the man was. You want to tell me who the man was? Yep. It was Gandhi. So a lady wanted to uh, went to Gandhi, and her son was eating a ton of sugar. She's like, "Can you just tell him to stop eating sugar?" And he goes, "Come back in two weeks." And then when he came back in two weeks, she came to him, and uh, she said, "Can you can you tell him?" And he's like, "Stop eating sugar." And she's like, "That's it." He's like, "Yeah." She's like, "Why did you say that two weeks ago?" He goes, "Because I had to stop eating sugar." So that was a very good. Well, it was very good that you remember yeah, that. Remember that was that. awesome. Yeah. So that's a congruency story. Man, I gotta use that in a talk. Yeah. <laughs> in my story, when I was going, when I was feeling depressed, and I, I felt this torment because I didn't know I was. I was grieving my potential the entire time, but if you can't put your finger on it, you didn't know, but I knew there was something more. And all the talks I've ever did, all the notes I ever took when I read books, my whole, really for seven years, I just started writing like the titles down. I just started speaking, going over different topics, different topics, different topics, and just improv it, doing it, doing it. Two hours go by, I'm like, man, it was fun, and I had more energy, I was sweating. It was like I did cardio, it was insane. And then I was like, well, what am I going to do with these things? Because they're, they're just, I just put them on OneDrive. You know, I don't, you know, this would be great to give to my kids, like Justice and Titus. That I, This is every bit of wisdom, every bit of thing I learned in my life that made me who I was to be able to help people. Instead of giving them a library, I have it all on video. So they could, they could watch it and they could learn from it. And I could teach them. Our great, 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 great grandkids is going to be able to see us doing things. It's amazing. We didn't have this opportunity. So that was, that was my big why, to do it for, for the kids, to leave them something. Then I realized that this five minute fuel was just, it was, it was, I realized all these five minute fuels coming out of me, this was just my hero the entire time, just the wisdom inside. But I'm like, this is the hero. So now we get to take this and, and give it to the world. So this is something where I, when I started doing these, I would spend two or three hours on a Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night. But this really got me through it because I was, even though I was dissatisfied and I didn't know what this issue was in my heart and it was calloused, this was kind of like the, the only couple hours of the day I could go and feel free again. I would actually crave doing this. So we wound up doing 300 videos in a matter of like six weeks. And I just put them on the iPad and then I just talk about them. And so we, we build these five minute videos. So that's where five minute fuel came from. Mm -hmm.